Hello and welcome to another episode of Geared Toward Gear. My name is Sean and I'm so glad you're here today. We have another unboxing from a subscriber. This came from my good friend Zoo up in Canada. Uh, Zoo subscribed to the channel really early on, one of the first probably five or ten subscribers to the channel. Uh, we've talked a lot in the last couple of months on Facebook and uh, I'm a subscriber to his channel as well. He also is a content creator and has a channel of his own. And so I reached out to him uh, a couple weeks ago and, and just said, hey, I'm going to send you some things that I think you'd be interested in based on your hobbies and kind of the things that, that he's into. And so I sent him a package and uh, much like what Frederick did is, is Zoo replied and said, what's your address? I'm going to send you something. And so I don't ever solicit things from people. I don't put my shipping address out there. I don't want anybody sending me stuff. Um, I like to send things occasionally. You know, I sent Emery a, a Gerber dime. I sent Frederick a package um, and, uh, and Zoo as well. But again, I was blown away that Zoo replied and said, I'm sending you something. And so this is it, it arrived today. I may post this video several days after I've actually filmed this because I have some other videos already filmed. I don't want to necessarily post two unboxings back to back. Uh, but nonetheless, this arrived today from Canada, from Zoo, and I'm super grateful already, not knowing what's in the box. And I will say this, uh, if you're a subscriber and you have a YouTube channel of your own and you upload videos, it doesn't matter what your video content looks like, whether it's related to gear or gardening or anything, I'd be interested to know. So leave a comment if you're a subscriber and leave a link to your YouTube channel because I'd like to, to check those out and let the other subscribers see see who all has a YouTube channel. I think it'd be interesting to see, and I'm sure some of you do that I'm just not aware of. Um, I am aware of Zoo's channel, of course, and so this is the box he sent me. So let's get into the box. Today's EDC, again, is the Benchmade bug out. So we will cut the tape here. And we're in. Looks like a little more tape here. All right, now we're into the box. So it looks like a lot of tissue paper. So I'm gonna pull that out real quick, get that out of the way and see what's underneath. So I see a big Ziploc bag. So I'm gonna grab that, get the box out of the way. So here we have the Ziploc bag. So a couple things are jumping out at me right away. That tube and those. Uh, obviously, you can probably read that. It says field notes. Those are always good to have. So let's get into this bag and see what all we got. Hopefully, I won't damage anything by just kind of dumping it out. All right. So here's the contents of the... Package. Let me bring you in a little closer. Let's get a little more intimate here so we can get a better view on this stuff. All right. So I saw a couple little envelopes. This one's kind of heavy. This one feels very light. Is it a note? It's graph paper. I'm guessing this is a note. Let me check it real quick off camera. Okay. So I'm going to cover up his, his actual first name. All right, so it says, Hi, Sean. I hope you're doing well in sunny Texas. And it actually is sunny today for the first time in a few days, so that's nice. Here's a few items. Feel free to re-gift or give away anything. Trying my hand at sewing, the two pouches are from my first batch. Small one is for your wife. Cheers, Zoo. So, okay, hold on a second. Let me reread that. Trying my hand at sewing, the two pouches are from my first batch. Small ones for your wife. So, okay, so that's a pouch, and that's a pouch. So you made, you made these. That is incredibly well done. If this is your first batch, then you're extremely talented at, at what you're doing here. And if you hadn't told me this one was for my wife, I would totally rock this thing with no shame whatsoever. It's got kind of, a, I guess, a, a floral pattern, if you will, uh, but a good size, kind of a coin purse size uh, pouch there. Really beautiful, really well done. You know, the, the accent with the red zipper, all the stitching looks 
really well done. It feels good quality, almost like a linen cotton blend maybe, I'm not quite sure. Let, let me know what the materials are, Zoo, in the comments uh, that you use for these very soft and supple. That's incredibly well done. Um, and in the unboxing from, from John from maybe a month ago, he included a lanyard that he made, which again, I thought was just really well done. So there are some talented viewers, uh, that's for sure, much more talented than I am. That's that's unbelievable that you, that you made that. That's fantastic. And then we got another one here. And this one's a little larger. I guess this one's for me. A nice kind of dark, really dark gray, almost black color with a a gray zipper. So the zipper is kind of an accent color, which is really nice. Feels like there's something in there. But again, really soft and supple. Stitching's really well done. I mean, like the, the double stitching there, kind of where the zipper interfaces with the bag. If this, I mean, this is crazy. Like, if this is your first batch and you're just trying your hand at sewing, I think you've got a hand at sewing. And again, it has like this flannel material almost on the inside, which is really, it's a nice contrast, right? So when you open it, you're not just seeing blackness, you're seeing some color and some contrast to find your items. Could be good for, for an EDC kit, a medical kit, uh, pens, pencils. I mean, the sky's the limit with stuff like this, you guys. So that is incredibly well made. I, I'm shocked actually that, that you made those by hand. That's incredible. And inside of this larger one was a, uh, a Fresnel lens, I believe is the, the technical term for this. It's a magnifying device uh, that you can use. Let me see if I can magnify the camera there. There you go. So obviously you can use these for magnifying small print or for starting fires. Um, I've never tried to start a fire with a magnifying glass, at least not since I was a little kid, but I might have to give that a shot. It's got a little sleeve that, that it rides in, so that is very cool. Super slim, could go in your wallet very easily. So that's awesome to have. Thank you so much for that. Okay, that's kind of heavy. I'll save that for a minute. All right, so here we've got a pen. It appears to be. And at closer inspection, I think this is a pencil. I think it's a mechanical pencil. And I'm impatient at times, so I'm going to rip into this and take the pencil out so we can take a closer look. There's probably a better way to do this. It looks like there's a little tab here on the side. Okay, we're in. It's got some Japanese writing on it, so I'm not sure the manufacturer. So it says Uni, which is the same um, logo that you would see like on a Uniball. It says uh, Mitsubishi Pencil. And a 0.5 millimeter so a nice really nicely made is that aluminum on the end I think it is so it's aluminum on it looks like from this kind of silver ring down is aluminum and it's got some really nice knurling there at the, at the very end if I can get a, a closer view of that of the knurling and of the, the tip there and then the body here is some sort of an acrylic there's the Marking on the pencil itself, if I can get a Kuru Toga 0.5. And there's our lead. So I don't know anything about this brand, but to me this feels like a very high-end mechanical pencil. It's definitely not the ones I used when I was a kid in school. Um, this is really, it appears very high quality and very well made, nice pocket clip. So that'll definitely go into my writing implements collection. I did a video on kind of EDC pens and I've actually had a couple mechanical pencils in my wish list on Amazon to, to add to the collection and now I don't have to because you sent me this beautiful pencil here. So thank you so much for that. That is a great addition to my collection. All right, I'll save that. It feels heavy. I think I might know what's in there, but we'll save that. Then we got two uh, field notes, and I love the colors on these. These are made in the USA, and I do like, um, you can get these in some different variations. I think you can get lined paper, true graph paper, and this is more of a, uh, it's not graph paper necessarily, but it's similar, and it's great for sketching and, 
and things like that. So I do like that, uh, that type of uh, paper in field notes. And I've got, uh, I mean, I've had several, and, and the most recent one that I have in my EDC bag, I recently uh, used the last page. So that will be a great addition. Another thing actually, that's currently in my wish list on Amazon is field notes and like two random mechanical pencils that I didn't really know anything about, but they seem decent. So now I've got field notes and a nice mechanical pencil uh, to write with. So here we've got another little envelope and inside we have, okay, I know exactly what this is. This is a Canadian maple leaf, a one ounce round of silver. So this is awesome. First and foremost, and let me, let me give you a little closer look on that. It's Canadian Maple Leaf. These are minted by the Royal Canadian Mint, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I do actually collect some precious metals, and I do not have a Canadian Maple Leaf. I've got all kinds of stuff. I do have some stuff from the Royal Canadian Mint. I have some 10 ounce bars. Um, but one thing that's really interesting, and I'll go on a quick little precious metals tangent here. And, and after seeing this and holding it, I just, I love silver. I love the sound of it, the feel of it. Um, one thing that's really interesting about the Canadian Mint, the Royal Canadian Mint, is that most silver, if you buy silver, you know, from, uh, you know, like a, a poured bar or even like an American Eagle um, or, or really any other good quality silver, it's going to be 0.999 in purity. What's unique about the Royal Canadian Mint is they do 4-9. So you'll see there it says 9999. So 9,999 out of, out of, I guess, 10,000 of this is pure silver. So the purity level on this is higher than your standard uh, bullion, poured bars, uh, rounds, coins, things like that from other parts of the world, other government mints and, and private mints. And so for that reason, I, I do like Canadian uh, silver because it does have that kind of added kind of fun factor that it's it's four nines instead of three nines. So if you're into silver, go look at your silver or go to your favorite silver website and you'll notice 999. That's very common, but to have four nines is not common and that's pretty unique to the Royal Canadian Mint. In fact, one of my old bosses used to work for the Royal Canadian Mint. Um, so that's very cool. That is very cool. And it's worth its weight in silver, which right now I think is like $16 and change. I haven't checked it in a couple weeks, but that is fantastic and super generous. So the last thing, uh, which I say for last intentionally because I immediately uh, noticed this. So this is a tube. And I don't know what's in it actually, it could be anything, but the tube itself is from Great Eastern Cutlery and they make traditional pattern knives and they have for, for a very long time. They're USA made out of Pennsylvania. I'm very familiar with the company, very familiar with a lot of their patterns, but I do not own one and I never have and I'm ashamed as an American to say that. Um, but if there's one in here, which there very well may be, um, it'll be my first GEC knife, and it's the Farm and Field Tool number 71 Bullnose. So let's pop this open and see if that's in fact what is in here. So I can see the wax paper, which is very uh, typical for GEC knives. They're all packaged in this wax paper to protect the knife inside. And it definitely feels like a knife. So there is a knife in here. And holy crap, that's beautiful. Um, <laughs> So I'm blown away, first of all, at your generosity because GEC knives are not cheap. They're extremely high quality. The, the fit and finish and the tolerances that go into these, they're, they're handmade here in America and they're not inexpensive. And so that is insanely generous to, to give me a GEC knife, my first one, in fact. And to come from my Canadian friend, again, kind of makes me feel like a bad American. So it's the bull nose, as you can see on the, uh, the blade there, number 71. It's got a true half stop. I don't know if you noticed that when I opened it, but it stops right there. And then it goes the rest of the way. When you close it, a very, very solid positive half stop. 
and then you close it the rest of the way. The back springs on these things are super strong. I mean, really, really strong in, in a good way. I've seen tons of videos and, and I've handled a couple GEC knives. I've never owned one. And this one is absolutely beautiful. If we look at the pivot here, we'll see probably an F and F. Yeah, Farm and Field USA, Farm and Field Tool, made in USA. And this handle material feels like an acrylic, almost like a ivory color, but it almost looks glow in the dark, like that kind of glow in the dark color. Let me look at the package here. But does it say? Okay, here we go. Great Eastern Cutlery Number 71, Farm and Field, Bull Nose, Knife Bright Acrylic. That's freaking sweet. So this is a, a glow in the dark uh, knife. That's unbelievable. So unbelievable, in fact, that I'm gonna pause the video here. I'm gonna go get a flashlight. I'm gonna charge this thing up and show you what it looks and like. And we are back. So here is the Farm and Field Number 71 Bull Nose. Uh, kind of lit up and I'm using a light that's super powerful to do this. Um, it's like 3000 lumens. Um, but yeah, look at that. It absolutely glows in the dark. There's a lot of natural light still coming in from the window cause it's daytime, but that is super, super cool. Let me flip the light back on here and I'll give you some closing thoughts. This thing is freaking sweet. I'm, I'm really stoked about this knife. I, I love traditional patterns, uh, especially really simple ones, single blades like this. I just, I'm really drawn to. So that's extraordinarily generous. Again, I know these aren't cheap. If this came out of your personal collection or if you bought it just to send to me, either way, crazy generous. And I'm probably rambling and this video is probably longer than it needs to be. It feels brand new. I mean, the, the edge is, is definitely sharp. Um, Anytime I do these unboxings from subscribers, I get, not emotional, but I just get really overwhelmed with the generosity because generosity is something that, that I like to share with others. And when others return the generosity, especially in a case like this or with what John sent me or with what Frederick sent me, it just really makes me appreciate uh, this community, the subscribers to this channel, Zoo, my friend in this case, because he didn't have to send anything. Uh, I never expect anything in return. And, uh, you know, Zoo and, and a couple others are, are obviously the type of person that, that want to send something back kind of as a, as a thank you or as a kind of repayment for uh, something that was given to them. So the fact that you handmade these two things and gave them to me. So first of all, this is your first batch. And so out of your first batch, you gifted me two beautiful pouches that you made. So that, that means a great deal to me. The silver is super generous because it's silver and it has intrinsic value. Um, the pencil's fantastic. I'm really digging that. And that knife is just, is just sexy. There's nothing else I can say about that. So Zoo, Super generous. I can't thank you enough. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you soon.